Lord, I have suffered enough in this life. Let your pot of blessing fall upon my life. Let your pot of wealth fall upon my head. <laughs> I hope you were doing good. Now, remember last time we made a video of this particular mommy geo. If you haven't watched it before, I'm going to link it in the pin comment. Where uh, when her husband was ill, it's more of like she was trying to take over the church, and there was issues between the church elders and the wife of mommy of Daddy Geo. Reverend Watch's wife has been in a power struggle with leaders of the church since her husband was indisposed. She recently unleashed venom on some leaders of the church when she went close to the offering and tithe of the church. There are fools in the name of Jesus. They will come here and call out their tithe. I will question them that their tithe that they pay, they pay it for us of mommy or Reverend or Jesus. And you know that the Jew was even laying crosses on his own wife. <laughs> it was just a strong tussle. That's why I always tell you people like, you see when it comes to church, running a church maybe especially all these maybe one-man churches when you are going to see that real katakata giti giti katakata woto woto is when there is issues with the main figurehead and you see the whole tussle for power who is next who is taking authority and all that you get some people are in churches right now that are just pretending and acting humble and loyal because our guy is still there but if something happens to a guy you see those who would come and start claiming what they don't know a very interesting story coming out of Accra, the capital of Ghana, where the founder and leader of the Resurrection Power New Generation Ministries, Reverend Anthony Kujubwachi, has asked his congregants to pay for his white SUV, a God on contract. The Ghanaian preacher who is recovering from illness recently spoke to his congregation online, where he told them that if they paid for his car, the Lord will bless them with their own cars. According to him, the car he bought was shown to him in a vision that he's supposed to drive. God came for me from this house I'm currently in and brought me to church in a white car. What it means is that he is done with me here and I will soon be returning. So I have searched for the white car and I have found that particular car. I have acquired it on high purchase, he told the congregation. He consequently asked the church to contribute to the payment of the car. So whoever feels touched in their heart to help me pay for the car, put the money in an envelope and raise it up as I pray for you. I'm telling God to give you a car because you are helping me pay for my car. Whatever car you want, he said. He assured his members that he will return to the church soon as he is recovering from illness. So that happened and good news, good news, good news. It seems that he is now back into you know um operation and while he was leaving credits to pastor Boateng. okay i think he's, he's actually someone i respect so much on the space who goes deep into talking about things that happen in church especially in ghana tree tree minty tree um he he did a breakdown because while he was let me give you a summary before i play the video right now for you to watch while he was doing fine so he went from doing fine waxing strong in ghana at a particular point he was more of like one of the most attended churches in ghana at a particular time so he has a lot of a crowd okay so he went from that state to then going down and then the wife issue and then trying the wife fighting the elders and all the whole issue about church money and all that to right now trying to come up again so while he was at the peak of what he was doing or what I say he's having all the attention in Ghana or what I say most of the attention. The time and that was two years ago he had arguably the largest gathering of members at the 31st night service in Ghana and was arguably one of the unstoppable voices in Ghana's Christian circles. Now one of the things their church touted himself with was that they were the only 100% correct church in Ghana. Now the rest had all backsliding. Every church has backsliding. I didn't hear this from just anybody. I heard it from a member who told me exactly this. After the cases video went viral, anyone who got testimonies and miracles from their ministry and left are going to lose everything that they got by the ministry or through the ministry. He even mentioned specific people and said they were going to lose their blessings. Even those who had children, he said, He's going to collect all the children that they got through the ministry. And so the children are going to die literally. 
and go back to where they came from. Any one of you who has married in this ministry and has had a child through this ministry and have stopped the church, I will collapse the marriage. This marriage you have been marrying, which church has been marrying like the one you are experiencing here? In this place you've been really marrying. In some churches, there's the only one wedding, but in this church, just this year we've had over 300 marriages. Some of you, you wouldn't have ever married. Look at your waist. Now you have a good husband following you, and now you are playing with where you came from. Clap for you. Listen to it carefully. This announcement. It, all those of you who came here who were poor and God has prospered, you have stores and all that you got. I'm taking all of them from you. So this is the announcement. Any one of you that the resurrection power God, my father has helped you like the Bulgar leader. The old burger leader, he and the wife were not getting a child, they were not getting pregnant. But by the grace of God, through this ministry, they have a child now. He's disgracing me. That child, for example, I'm going to take that child, I'm going to collect the child from the man and the wife. He's called Frank Pong. You that have anyone, anyone that has a number, just call him after this. Service. I'll let the child go to where the child came from. Clap for Jesus. Listen to it carefully. This announcement. Anyone that came here that was poor, that God has prospered you, that you've stopped church for one year now, I'm collecting all of them. When they came here, they didn't have anything. It is through my God and the grace God gave me that they have been prospered. By this time that many of our churches don't meet because of Corona, many churches have closed down. This is the time they were supposed to help us. This is the time they were supposed to help buy lands and build churches. So in this place, one man has built a church for us. And you people, you got money and you are now refusing to come to church but when you were poor you were the one coming to church i'm talking to my father i'm going to collect all of them so if anyone used to be here and they got money and now if they become poor if they come i'm going to reject them i'm going to sack them yes god told me he's put a container big container in front of the church at the gate anybody that comes here the shoes you wore to the place, that torn pants that you wore, that um, razor that you used to adjust with pins, he's been collecting all of them and putting them in the container and changing your life through this ministry. So when he blesses you and you stop, he will send you back to the container and put you back what you used to have. That's why this ministry's mission is really great. Even you, those of you outside the country, if God gave you money, you are buying lands outside the country and buying houses. If you are not mining me, you are not helping me, you are not giving money to spend, I'm going to collect it. This announcement, I'll be making it God will immerse you. I'm telling you well. All over the world, all of you that God through me has given you a chance, gotten you into a, a, a good place in life. If you play with me, I'm going to call it them. The power that is working in me and with me that made you get it is going to help me retrieve it from you. I'm telling this to the whole world. Listen. It is in my anointing you got this. I will put sickness on you. Many people responded by attacking the man of God and also some criticizing him very harshly. Now, just the next Sunday, when you would think the man of God will come and apologize or do something softly, the man of God came back even with more fire. More fire than the first video. And this time he came back to pray with his members against anyone that has responded to the videos. And anybody that has said anything that was a criticism to them he said the one who put the video out and anybody who has commented negative living men of god they are going to die some of them are going to be crippled and paralyzed and others 
they are going to even have their parents die. And he even made a church after this um, revenge prayers and attacking prayers and killing prayers to pray against the members who left the church once again. Now, remember, this was what he was addressing and praying against and cursing that brought all this buhaha. And now he still went back and said the church members should pray against those people again and that if they had children, they should lose their children and you will receive their children. If they had husband, their husband should leave them so that they come and marry you. Everybody. My God, help me that things will be well with me. Anybody that comes to church who has stopped, that you are blessed. Who is a man? I'm also a man. I receive all the money you gave to me. I am a woman. So any woman that came here, that has bought buildings, has had money, bought cars in the name of Jesus, I take it. I am a woman, so I take it from every woman. Open up your mouth and pray. Now, that was very pitiful to watch. Fast forward. Getting to the end of that same year, the man of God suddenly got sick and it was even speculated that he was dead. But by the grace of God, he has come to speak of what happened to him. He is alive today and we give glory to God. What did you learn from this happening? All this thing is under two years. The first lesson is that, please, if you are a man of God, serious Christian, don't curse and wish people to suffer. What you wouldn't love happen to you shouldn't be wished for anyone, no matter what they have done against you. Now, this is serious. Now, as you curse those who offend you, have you thought about those you have also offended? If they are also cursing you, and if you believe in curses, and you want them to happen to people that have wronged you, then automatically you are also saying that the people that you have wronged to have their cases working against you. So everything is going to be very bizarre. Now, life is already challenging. So let's be very careful when we are embittered. Watch your mouth. Let's learn from the master. Take his word seriously. In Matthew 5, 44, the Lord said, But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Romans 12, 14 says, Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Is this not instructing? Very, very instructive. The master demonstrated that on the cross. He demonstrated it when he was hanging on the cross. The people who were killing him were mocking at him, but he prayed for them in Luke 23, 34. He said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. So he said, Bless those who curse you bless never case and he demonstrated it that means we can do it because we are supposed to look on to jesus hallelujah now the second lesson i got from here is that when people are flooding you people are coming from all over the world to you never forget one thing it is never about you and it will never be about you get it right and also when people leave you it is not about you it is between them and god so if you think you are doing the right things and people still leave you, just go to God. Make sure that between you and God, everything is right. You are doing the ministry and the call the way God wants you to do it. It's a simple. In that way, you will never take offense because you know that it is never about you. It is between them and their God. Are you getting it? Now, that was the problem of Prophet Samuel. When Israel rebelled and said they wanted a king, the prophet was offended. So it is not starting today. But God redirected the prophet and I like that. And he gave them the right focus and the right mindset. First Samuel 8, 7. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me. I should not reign over them. Do you see it? So though very devastating and disheartening when people leave you when people leave us as pastors leave their people to god but let god handle them and don't even say i leave you to god as if you are trying to curse them because many people they will say i will not say anything but i leave you to god let god deal with you don't do that just relax and allow god to handle them don't of yourself say anything against them out of bitterness and the third thing I learned is that don't let ministerial achievement and personal life accomplishment get into your heart. 
Often when people become big in their purposes and endeavors, their hearts get enlarged or lifted as well. Now that is very serious because pride is going to make you fall. Pride is going to let you go down. Listen, forget about those things which are behind. Stop dwelling on them and return every praise to God. Maintain the same heart of a servant you had when you just began. You understand? Now, most of our utterances when we are finally big will never show up if we were small. But when people become big, their utterances change. So guard your heart with all diligence. Don't let any foreign influence come in there because of the achievement you are having. It is the most important thing if you are going to be a minister of God or a serious Christian. The moment things get into your heart and your heart is enlarged, you are going to have problems. Proverbs 16, 18 and 19 says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. So what do I want us to learn from this? It is not different what he's doing because some of you are under this captivity of your papa in the same light as well. Look at this particular video of this person called Aqua. So I'm going to transcribe what he's saying in Igbo to English. And he's saying that some of you have been able to, that have been, that have gotten wealthy because of me or because of my, the charms I'm doing for you. And you come here and then you are appreciating me with small cars. And then when others are giving me big cars like this, that he's not worth small cars. It should be coming big. If not, he is more of like the charger that is the reason why they have power. So if he, he can remove the charger anytime, more of like he is the one that is their source to whatever they have. So he can remove whatever is the reason for them to become worthy that they had come to him. When I look at this like this now, I, I, it, now just, it just makes me understand because some of your pastors, like the one I've just showed you right now, who later... Maybe God has used that to teach him a lesson. Only he knows if he was called or not. I don't know. But looking at someone that makes such statements that those who have been blessed from his church and all that, you now have to now start thinking for yourself. When it comes to your concept of church, when it comes to your concept of being in a community like that, is it about Jesus or is it about the man that is standing there that is supposed to be a representative of Jesus or it is supposed to be your spiritual guide? This is why some of you fear your gods. So that's why I call these people gods on their own. Because if he, if like let's say the pastor believes that he can take away all the blessings you have gotten from being in the church. Who is the blesser? Is, he, is it God himself as the author and finisher of your faith? Or is it the pastor himself or the church itself you are following? <laughs> Forty or fifty, all women are all of all. I'm going to go to the bed. I'm going to go to go to the bed. I'm going to go to go to Alumuwa <laughs> it will be big and more. It will be a as a polar, as a tano. I have broken here with Tavi. Yeah, with Tavi, a bowl more. In your mezzo, we go, Kuma, we are the moment of Makana. In your mobile, I have been a yamu. I never can make us stand. So looking at Aqua and his statement and what this pastor has said earlier on when he was at the peak of what he was doing, 
I hope right now maybe he's going to come back to, to being the pick of what he's doing. Reconcile the boat and tell me what you think in the comment. Who is really your God? That's the more they have a stronghold on your life that sometimes you might even be the one inflicting things on your life because of the fear that I've been able to instill in you and that fear becomes a control puppet, making you a puppet for them and their manipulations to milk you anyhow they want. That is my opinion. Tell me what you think in the comments and I'm going to see you next time. Yeah!